Hey, it's good to see you again. Welcome back. Oh yeah, I don't know, make yourself comfortable. You sounded very busy on the phone. <sighs> yeah, I know. There's a lot of unpredictability lately. Yeah. But it's really nice to see you. I love when we get to work on some math together. So you wanted to um, work on the substitution method from algebra, right? Yeah, okay. Of course, that's not a problem at all. Um, we're gonna get this, I promise. Okay, so I, I know that it's been kind of tricky, but we are going to get this, I believe in you. And uh, yeah, just ask as many questions as you want or need, okay? Uh, okay, so do you want me to just kind of break it down a little bit um, so that you can kind of figure out and refresh your mind of where you got stuck before and kind of listen to maybe like a new fresh start? Or do you want to look at questions? Yeah, you like it? Oh, thank you. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so let's do general idea. So before we do x and y, let's do like, um, just the general idea of substitution, okay? So let's say we have heart and stars. And let's say I have heart equals star minus 2, okay? So let's just say I tell you that um, because of this equal sign right here, this equals sign, it literally tells me that heart is equivalent or equal to star minus 2. And I know I just am repeating myself over and over right now, but it's actually very important. So heart and star minus 2 are interchangeable now, and that's what substitution is about. So if you had an instance of heart, you can literally substitute or replace it with star minus 2 instead get something equivalent, but looks a little bit different. That's it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, just, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that means that if I have, say, five heart, okay, and in algebra that usually would mean multiplying, right, five times heart or something, you can replace that heart with star minus two. So, I could have five times star minus two. So literally because I have a heart and heart equals star minus two, I've basically substituted, yep, substituted that heart with star minus two to get something equivalent. Yep. So replacing and substituting, that's the logical piece for this. That's it. There's nothing more to it. So, in this case, like, why do we care that these two are, um, equivalent? Well, maybe you like stars more than hearts, so you prefer to work with stars instead. That's okay. And because we have this relationship between them, we can just substitute that. And then from here, you can do whatever else you want, maybe the distributive property or whatever else you want algebraically, but this is the substitution step. Oh, why do I have parentheses? Um, it's because I want to keep the heart as a single unit, right? So heart equals star minus two together. So parentheses puts that as a priority and grouped together in, um, do you remember our like PEMDAS or BEDMOS stuff for order of operations, right? If I don't have parentheses there, then the the um, multiplication would happen first. So we want to make sure it just is, you know, hearts, star minus two, five, and five. So it just keeps it very clear. Yeah. Um, good. That's a great question. Okay. So in general, you know, it's cool to be able to substitute, like we said, if you have a preference, you know, and if you have star minus two, you can also replace that with heart. So it goes either way. And I know it might not look like, you know, they're equal. So it really comes down to the power of that equal sign. Because, you know, if I had heart and heart, then those are literally 
equal um, but because of this equal sign we have this relationship between heart and star now okay so now let's just apply that to um, maybe one of your questions do you have like a direct problem we can look at okay yeah show me so you have X that's okay I know I know you took like a lot of notes and stuff so yeah let's just go like fresh start clean start X minus Y equals 2 and what else X plus okay 2y equals 11 great okay so I'm pretty proud of that girly bracket okay so we're solving for this so first of all what does that mean so solve for X and Y can you tell me what that means yes exactly we want to know what values for X and Y make each of these true? Perfect, yes. And we want both of them at the same time. So this X is the same as this X, and this Y is the same as that Y. Excellent, exactly. They are simultaneous equations. So with this whole system, we want to solve both equations together. Yes. And so we want to find out what the values are. So, um, let's see what else here. Do we know anything about X and Y besides this? So, X and Y are different letters, right? But that doesn't mean anything about them, right? That doesn't mean that they necessarily have different values. They might have the same value, they might have different values. Okay, good. Just making sure. Yeah. Um, okay, good. So, if we have either equation on its own, like x minus y equals 2, that just gives me a relationship between x and y, right? We don't know the exact values, like, you know, 10 minus 8 is 2, but so is uh, 4 minus 2. And we can also have negative numbers, right? Like negative 1 minus negative 3. So there are actually infinitely many pairs, right? Um, and same for this one. So we want to solve them together and that will give us enough information to be able to figure out an actual value for x and y rather than just this infinitely many relationships. Okay, so how do we do that? Have you tried working on this before? Yeah, you did. Oh, it's okay. We can just start fresh here. Don't worry about that. Um, so, let's see. So, which one would you pick to first get something like this? Which one? It doesn't matter which one. There's no right answer. But which equation would you prefer? And which variable would you like to write in terms of the other? The first? Yeah, me too. Exactly. I like that too. So there isn't a right way, right? We can still do the same thing for the second one, but if we pick the first one, there are um, coefficients of one here, so we don't have to worry about, you know, dividing by two or anything weird there. So let's just go ahead and do the first one. Okay, good. So we're going to solve for, how about x in terms of y, using that first equation. Good. So we have like this. So let's write it as x equals something, right? Just like heart equals stuff. So how do we isolate this x on one side of this equal sign? We have to get rid of this negative y, right? Okay, so how do I undo this negative y? What's the opposite of minus? Exactly, got it, great. And if I do that on this side, I have to do the same thing on the other side of this equal sign, right, to keep it nice and balanced. Good. So then these cancel. That's why we picked plus y, is literally to cancel out the minus y. So I'm left with x, because this is zero, right? Anything plus zero goes away. x equals two plus y, or y plus two. Let's just do y plus two. I like that. Great. Okay, cool. 
So now we have something like this, heart equals to R, and in this case, plus 2. Okay, good. So now what? Oh, this is where you got stuck? Okay, so what did you do? You took this and you wanted to substitute into this equation. Ah, uh, okay, so nice substitution steps. So you did, you put it into this and so you got y plus 2 minus y equals 2. Okay, and then y minus y canceled and you got 2 equals 2. Ah, uh, okay, 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 cool. Alright, no, this is not a big deal. Don't feel stupid at all. So what you just did was you used this first equation to get this expression of x in terms of y now, right? So anytime you have an instance of x, you can replace it with y plus 2, which is what you did. That's wonderful. That's a substitution. But now you just went in circles because you used this first equation to get this expression in the first place. So it's actually a good thing that we got something redundant because that means we did this correctly, but you didn't use the second equation or anything with it. So that's the thing that we actually want to substitute into. Does that make sense? So whichever equation you use to get the relationship between x and y, you want to substitute into the other one to, um, continue the question. So now we can put the y plus 2 just like you did here, which was great, but you want to do that into the second equation. So anytime I see an x here in the second equation, I put y plus 2. So I have y plus 2 and then plus 2y. And if you want to be extra clear like we did before, you can put the parentheses, but since we're dealing with addition for everything, we can just go from left to right and rewrite it as y plus 2 plus 2y. And they equal 11. Excellent. So, just like this, just like you did before, but we're just going to cross that out. We're not going to go back to that first equation anymore because you extracted all of the information that you wanted for this so now we have everything in terms of y or star or whatever symbol you want, but we basically eliminated x, yeah, through that substitution. But this isn't the substitution, or I mean, this isn't the um, elimination method, right? So this is just kind of by chance eliminating it through substitution. So we have y and 2y. Can you simplify it here? I'll follow your lead. Tell me. Good. Yep. So y plus 2y is 3y. Excellent. Plus 2 equals 11. So we have one equation with one variable now, right? Instead of having x and y's, we have just y. So what order do you want to do this? Subtract the 2. Good. Do that on both sides. Good. So then these cancel. So you have 3y equals 11 minus 2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 9. Good. And then divide by 3. Excellent. On both sides. So 3 divided by 3 goes away and you get y equals 9 over 3. Good. And I like that you're doing... um lines for divide now. I'm glad that you're no longer doing this thing. I know we got away with that before in arithmetic, but it really gets complicated and you kind of don't really want to write this anymore either. Proud of you. Good. I see that on your sheet there. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. Good. So you have y equals 3, so you found this mystery number. So now we need to solve for x. How do you want to do that? Yeah, exactly. So you already have an expression for x in terms of y, so you could do x equals, and then this is kind of substituting as well, right? You see a y here, but you know y is 3, so you do 3 plus 2, which is 5. Good. Now, just a little tip. Um, just 
just to save you a little bit of potentially save you time is when you substitute this it's totally up to you of course if you're confident with this it's okay but um when you substitute stuff back to solve for another variable it's a good idea to go back to your base equations just in case somehow you know this went wrong or something so if you happen to have three you could substitute into either of these original ones but in this case you did perfectly fine so you don't need to um, but for instance you could just do x minus then we got three for y and then you can add three on both sides I know you have to kind of redo the work a little bit, but it's good to kind of go through the exercise. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So we have x equals 5 and y equals 3. That would be our answer. And you can always check this stuff. That's the best part, right? Do you know how to check? Exactly. You just take these two values and plug it in there, see if it satisfies both equations. Good. So what do we get here? Do you want to just write out the check really quickly? This will be great for tests or quizzes or anything, but we have, yeah, and don't mix up the x's and y's. We're going to keep the order. So 5 minus 3 equals 2, question mark. Does it equal 2? Yes, it does. And then how about 5 plus 2 times 3? And just remember multiplication first. So that would be 6. Does 5 plus 6 equal 11? Yes, indeed it does. Good job. We are happy with that. Perfect. Yeah. So it's good to check that back to our original questions if possible. That's always really nice anyway. So x equals 5, y equals 3. Just box that up. And we are good to go. Does that help? Okay, yeah, good. So the main thing was you got the substitution part just perfectly fine. Um, it just looked like you went in circles there. So just make sure that whichever way you pick, whichever equation first, you can do this whole thing in terms of x. So you could have y equals stuff with x in it. Um, but you know, sometimes you just end up having to work with fractions or negatives. Um, you know, unnecessarily, unless you like that thing. If you like it a little more complicated and it's fun for you, it's totally fine. It's not wrong. But uh, in this case, you picked the nice and simple one to work with, which is what I would do too. So, um, but just make sure once you get that information, when you substitute, that you substitute into the other question. But yeah, it looked like you got the um, actual simplifying part down great. You got your two steps down perfectly. It looks like, um, you've been practicing that. That's awesome. Okay, so, you think you can take this with you and work on the homework a bit? Yeah, you can, you can keep this to refer to it just to kind of remind you. You look like you're doing a great job. Alrighty, so, I will see you next time. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions um, in the meantime.